Hello and welcome to Bard's Craft. Today we have an epic quest to create a otherworldly mix of fantasy dungeon terrain and sci-fi. Let's make something vile, fit for the mind flayers. Okay, first I shaped a fairly large hardboard base. I need lots of room for freaky mind flayer psionic tech devices. The mind flayers have built their stuff inside a cavern, so I'll try to use this EVA foam as rock and cave material. It's always nice to try something new. We all know XPS foam would work, but everybody can get this. So these will be slightly elevated cave formations. I'll also add some sand and rubble or tiles around and higher cave walls. I got these deep rocky textures into the foam. To attach these, I suggest using hot glue. I didn't have any, so I used PVA. Next I made the cave walls and glued them on as well. I also made another entrance to the cave here. Okay, this might even work, I thought. After the glue had dried, I cut off the excess foam from the sides. Yeah, PVA glue is not the best suited for this. It's still wet between the foam, but it seems to hold for now. Next we can make some sort of incubation pods where poor adventurers, hosts, are kept inside while the Mind Flayer's offspring develops. One of my main construction materials is gonna be glue textured cardstock, something like I did in this build. You simply apply PVA glue on cardstock and create some uneven textures. This will become a bony, perhaps organic building material. Very easy to make, just add plenty of random textures and make sure to work it again after it is semi-dried. This results in clearer textures. You wait for it to dry and now you have a perfect material for any kind of undeady, fleshy bone terrain. Hmm, I had no plan, but trial. I started by kind of wrapping a bit around the little plastic cup to see what happens. Obviously, we want to see what's inside, so I cut away much. Let's see. Yeah, we're getting there. I made the opening a bit larger so we can see more of the victims. Good, I made three of these, cut them out, and then glued them around the cups. For this, I really need hot glue. I have these large sticks, but lost the gun, and only have this little gun. Perhaps I can make this work. Hey, we got this. Well, the next time I see a hot gun in the store, I won't say, nah, I won't need it. That is, if we're still allowed to go to stores. Anyway, I painted the insides of the incubation chambers with a crimson red. This is important to do before it is too late. At worst, our victims will have to read nutritional facts of oats. Horrible, but not the worst way to go. I also covered some visible cardstock on the outside with black. Next I'll cover more with cardstock for extra detail. I carefully cut halfway through the cardstock. Now it bends beautifully and is easy to glue on here. Now I wondered if these are starting to look too spaceship-like and then cut off the excess. I continued by cutting cardstock circles to put on top of the chambers. Looks like I made them a bit too small. No problem, I can glue on more of the textured cardstock. By the way, here I'm intentionally mixing the untextured and the textured materials for a better look. I don't know about this. Looks funny. Well, perhaps it looks good in the end. These are gonna be some super psionic tech spaceship mind flayers. Excellent. 
When gluing this on, I bent the excess flap down. Looks good. Really, these do look ridiculous. However, I'll get to work more on them soon, after the rest of the diorama is at least half complete. Okay, I made hexagonal tiles from the textured cardstock. Well, never mind. Let's not call this hexagonal anymore. I kind of like this futuristic vibe. Perhaps the mind flayers are the good guys. They have green high tech and want to convert everyone to their ways. Hey, wait a moment. Isn't this... Um, nah. Let's build a free speech inhibitor here. Some kind of a wonky device that emits obedience frequencies. Much like the one in your living room. I'll just build something exceedingly epic from craft sticks, barbecue sticks and the textured cardstock. Here I was running out of the textured cardstock, so I made this look better by building these panels from the scrap bits I had left. Next is the antenna looking thingy. I don't know what it is, only that it is supposed to look good. I glued on the little sticks and then attempted to make some cool looking cardstock piece on the top. Yeah, that should do. I super glued these beautiful bits into place and then added a few little bits to cover gaps and to give more detail. Here I was again in a hurry to get to the toilet, but I managed to get all these shots for you. Now let's create a few more details. I made a lever, again using both the textured and untextured cardstock. You'll see the results soon. This is a mysterious lever that you should probably not touch. But an adventurer is pretty lame if he doesn't. I decided to poke in a few sticks and built some sort of railings on a few areas. Okay, pretty good. And then I glued on some cardstock bits. This leftover junk bit fits here. Perhaps it's a strange circuit thingy. Ah, this is a sadness multiplier. Let's go with that. The last thing I did this day was to glue on some extra details on the incubation chambers. Let's quickly make some extra detail in the foam. These deep cuts will look very good. Next I covered the rest of the diorama with sand, diluted PVA glue and sand. A simple way to make rough ground and stone textures. After a few hours of drying, I base coated most things with black and a dark brown. I thought I had ruined the textures on the cardstock with too much paint, but luckily I was able to remove the paint. After that, I dry brushed with grey and a tan. I continued by painting details with black and drake tooth. All of the textured cardstock surfaces are covered with the drake tooth. All of this looks horrible now, but don't worry, it usually does at this point. Next I mixed a dark red wash, just paint in water. Everything should start looking better when we get this on all of the textured cardstock. As you can see, the wash flows and settles nicely into the glue textures. Then I brushed all black parts with gunmetal. Okay, I took the same red wash and applied it on the ground. Yeah, hmm, this is certainly the weirdest thing I've made since that elemental plane of fire diorama. Just to confuse myself even more, I dry brushed a bit with this blue. Let's forget that by making some hot glue mushrooms. That always helps. 
I super glued them on and then painted with Drake Tooth because I haven't tried that before. I then applied the red wash on the stalks and also a bit on the caps. Then I made some funny dots with the help of a stick. My next trick to cover more of the mess I have created is strange underdark grass tufts. We don't need any explanations. I think the sand didn't work at all. Usually I use bark choppings and that always looks good. I then colored the tufts with this purple tone wash. Well, this might have worked. Next, a sacrifice must be made. I glued on an Eldritch Foundry custom miniature into one of these incubation chambers. Through this sacrifice I am granted the power to announce a giveaway of Eldritch Foundry minis. Join this exciting giveaway by following the instructions below. Win physical minis or printable files downloads. Good, I left one chamber unglued. Just in case I need it for something else. Okay, I had to fix this mess, so I acquired some brown pigment. This must be my biggest crafting investment in a long time. I applied the pigment dust using a brush until I had hid the hideous parts of the ground. Hey, I think it worked. Good job, pigment. I might not use the pink in this video yet. Next I edge highlighted the reddish details. I was slowly getting more convinced that this might work. Highlighting the tiles worked especially well. I continued by doing a few additional highlights with a white gel pen. And then I also tried making some strange circuit-like symbols on a few parts. I had to be careful not to go too crazy with these, and made sure to not fully circuit board all surfaces. Next let's make some ducts or cables from steel wire. I folded the wire eightfold and then twisted it. That's good to go. First I measured and shaped the cables to fit and then cut them. Hey, get back here, mushroom. I superglued these between the various alien tech devices. I was able to hide some of the cable ends under the cardstock bits which made this easier and more beautiful. Whatever I couldn't cover up nicely, I'll fix later with more pigment. Yeah, next I applied the brown pigment on the twisted steel wire. It now blends beautifully into the terrain. I think I have to recommend pigment powder now. You can probably get a jar for under $10 and that lasts years. Fun and easy to do, adds perfectly matte color tones to your crafts. Go ahead, try it. All right, more color was needed, so I dry brushed our grass tufts with pink. We already used the purple wash, so it should work great. Ha, huh, I also tried brushing the wires with pink, and I like the results. Now we're getting there. I went ahead and brushed a bit with this blue as well. Looking at this I got the idea to apply the purple tone wash on all metallic parts. All the colors are starting to work together, all the pieces are falling into place better than I could have expected. I applied the wash a bit everywhere. So what did we learn today? Pigments are great to hide mistakes and to create more color. Little details such as grass tufts and steel wire can transform your peasant level craft into an epic craft.
Now I invite you to join me on my epic quest of tabletop crafting on Odyssey, a better video platform that puts the creators back in control. All my videos are there, ad-free for you to watch. Welcome to Bardscraft on Odyssey. Also, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube if you enjoyed the video, and to help me make even more good videos, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.